which scanner should you use? All right, guys, we get a lot of calls from customers that are scanning objects very similar or related to this. And this is a Vortex magnifier. Now this will sit on a Picatinny rail on objects with Picatinny rails. And it's just a very mechanical object. And there's a lot of customers that are calling with stuff like this to reverse engineer it. So I'm gonna give you an example of first off, which scanner you should use for something like this for the application of reverse engineering it and turning it into a CAD model for then modification or accessories. We've got a selection here. The Einscan SP or its big brother, the Pro HD, would be a good option because it's a small object. So it fits right there on the turntable. The advantage to that is that it's very good detail, very good accuracy, very good resolution, and clean scans without a lot of work. You basically set it down, set the number of angles you want it to scan, you get your scan, maybe you flip it over for another orientation, and you're good to go. The problem with these ones, though, is they use structured light, which doesn't play well with dark surfaces, reflective surfaces, transparent surfaces, like this little chrome that we've got here, or the glass inside. So the structured light scanners with turntables, I would say out for this. Plus, maybe I'm needing to scan a longer object of some kind that this would go on, and that's not going to fit on the turntable. So we're going to get rid of that option. Now the next option would be something like the H2, which is awesome for body scanning, people scanning, full color scanning. If you want to do cars, it's got a really big field of view. It gets pretty darn good accuracy and detail, but in my experience, it's not the best when it comes down to mechanical objects like this. And again, it's it's structured white light and structured infrared, which will do a lot better on the black surfaces, but the reflective and transparent still not so much. So we'll eliminate that one. Next, we've got the HX, and this has the blue lasers, which is really good because the intensity of the lasers does not care about black surfaces or reflective surfaces. It just does a really good job on many kinds of surfaces without scanning spray. So HX, would definitely get the job done. We also have the FreeScan Trio. The one disadvantage with laser scanners is that you have to use markers either on or around the object you're scanning, which means a little more a little more work, and sometimes you have to move markers around to do a secondary scan. So markerless scanning is a very good advantage with the FreeScan Trio, but it's also kind of more designed for larger objects. It's got pho photogrammetry mode, but really, I like, for this type of object, the FreeScan combo because it's got all the same laser modes as the FreeScan Trio, but it's also got infrared, similar to the H2, which is great for markerless scanning of large objects. Then you also got the lasers with the multiple laser modes to get in all the little nooks and crannies at super high accuracy. The rest of these scanners are around 0.04 millimeters accuracy or 40 micron accuracy. And that doesn't really change slightly between modes, but on the laser scanners, specifically the free scans, you get 0.02 millimeters. That's 20 microns, which is metrology grade. And that means that these two scanners you can use for inspection. So if you're running a machine shop or something like that, and you wanna make sure your parts are coming out to spec, but you're tired of using your ferro arm or your CMM, you can literally do it by hand with the lasers on these ones. So in that regard, we're gonna go with the free scan combo. And of course we sell all of these scanners and more and accessories at visionminer.com slash scanners. So if you're interested or you still have some questions about which one you should buy after this video, feel free to give us a call or shoot us an email. We're here to help you get set up with the correct piece of equipment. So here we have our marker table, really a turntable with a bunch of markers on it. It's painted black and it has a ton of markers. So I can take anything and just set it on this surface and then scan it, and I don't have to apply markers on the part itself. Now I may want to in some situations, if I'm doing partial HD scanning and getting the ultimate high resolution detail, but for most objects in general, reverse engineering scanning, I won't ever need to do that. Now I should mention also that the scanning spray is great and helps with a plethora of objects, and it's thin enough to not affect really the data capture for reverse engineering, but in general with optics or custom parts and custom things like this, you don't necessarily want to spray them. Uh, for 99% of objects, it's totally fine. It's inert, it just sublimates into the atmosphere after a few hours, but some objects you do want to be careful. Let's go ahead and get our free scan combo plugged in. And for the first five seconds, I'm gonna click the middle button 
and let it adjust the auto exposure so that it determines how bright these lasers need to be. All right, guys, so we actually had some technical difficulties with the screen recording of this project, but I wanted to show you the final results anyway. We've got a lot of scan data here, of course, basically aligned a bunch of different scans together to get this result. Now, this was done on standard filter, which generally smooths the model a little bit and gets rid of some just ex excess information so that the surfaces are a little easier to grab in your reverse engineering software. So like here, if I wanted to get the cylinder and then these planes and then the overall cylinder and then these different faces and whatnot and take that and use those as reference points in CAD, then I would do that in Geomagic Essentials, which in the software, you can actually just click third-party software and go straight to it. Now, this is the bundled software that we sell at visionminer.com, and this is the baseline version for working with all scan data. So this allows you to create features, which you'll then export into whatever CAD program you're using. Now, I wanna show you the actual scans we did here as well. So I'll delete that mesh data, and then let's get rid of the markers. So we can just look at each scan individually. We scanned it in this orientation and so there's no bottom data but we got just pretty good quick data and then we added the mesh data from project two where we did it upside down the other way and got some of this data and the backside and everything else and well we still wanted to get more data in there and so we did a orientation where this mechanism this whole thing actually flips to the side so i actually flipped it out and then scanned the bottom side of the and then I did a little bit more, just from some more angles to gather any little areas we didn't have, and a little more there with a little bit of A sub spray. Because as you can see, the optic, the glass on the scope did not scan very well. Definitely difficult. You got a little bit of data with the lasers there, but when it comes down to fully transparent items, it's much more difficult. So we scanned it with a little bit of A sub spray, and you can see the results there. Now, if I get rid of all the others, and you see just the A sub spray scan, you can see it is super clean. So this is the difference, even with lasers, between using a disappearing scanning spray or some kind of powder to lighten a surface, as opposed to a black matte surface of a metallic material. So just with the A sub spray, you can save a lot of time and get better data almost no matter what you're doing. Again, this is just an example to show you how these scanners work. And really, you've got your own project, you've got your own business, and we're here to help you figure out which one is right to get your job done so that you can save time and make more money. So shoot us an email, give us a call, tell us what you're doing, ask your questions, and we'll tell you, well, this will work because of this. You could get away with this. The best one would be that. Anyway, again, thanks for watching. I'll pause the rest of your day. See you on the next video.